So this, this isn't what I wanted to do. Let me go back a minute. Come on. <clears throat> this is from a trip that uh, my Friendship Force Dallas group took in 2012. So we were hosted by people in the area. And this is a map of the area and you notice the wandering uh, river, the Ohio River with the um, um, road next to it or the highway next to it. We of course were in the immediate Cincinnati area, but we did take some side trips down this way, southeast to Ripley and um, uh, New Richmond. So this, when we talk about that, you'll know where we're going. We're going southeast and across the river as we were talking about earlier is Kentucky and Indiana. So there the three cities are, are just very, three states are very close together here. So my hosts were Judy and Orson Hornsby. You'll see Judy in some of the slides that we're talking about. But other than that, um, you may see a few people from our trip, but I've tried to minimize those as much as possible. So we're looking across the bridge from Kentucky into the downtown area of Cincinnati. Lots of bridges, of course, anytime you have a river and lots of other rivers. Um, well, let me go back here a minute as well, um, because we're gonna be seeing the stadium, uh, which is right here that you can see from in this picture. So lots of highways. Uh, Cincinnati is a pretty hilly town. So in back of us, you're gonna see uh, lots of hills. But along the river, it's fairly flat. And uh, here's where the Paul Brown Stadium is. And it's one of the many things you can do if you're into sports, the Bengals and the, the Bearcats play there. There are river boats on the Mississippi, on Mississippi, yeah, they go to the Mississippi, the Ohio River, uh, that you can go as showboat type things with the dinner and shows. And along the river, there are several parks that you can go to, lots of um, things to do and see, restaurants and parks that are fun to do if you have time to do some strolling. The main thing we visited along the river was the Freedom Center. And this is the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. It was opened in 2004. And it features what was going on in the area of Ohio and Kentucky, because this was the dividing line between North and South. And there was quite a bit of activity in uh, slaves being, uh, runaway slaves being transported across the river and, uh, and heading North from there. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. Our guide was here and we see our bridge that we saw from the other side, the John Rowland Bridge. And he was our guide for the, the tour that we had through the facility. It's made up of three connecting buildings that symbolize courage, cooperation and perseverance, which of course you had to do if you were in, involved in that activity during that time. And the museum tells the story of slavery in the United States, not just from the Underground Railroad, but also uh, how it all started and how, how people were treated. And it's really pretty grim. Uh, the slaves were brought in, in ships like this. They were just packed like cordwood and uh, shackled together. So it wasn't a pleasant trip. Many slaves died on their way from Africa. There are posters and other things, of course, in there that uh, tell us about the slave trade. Uh, this would be a poster where uh, slaves were, were he uh, held up at public auction to be uh, sold. And a lot of the artwork, of course, uh, also shows the conditions of slaves when, when we had slavery in this country. <clears throat> One of the most interesting things that I, I thought uh, saw, by the way, you see them uh, picking cotton, which was uh, one of the main crops in the area. <clears throat> One of the most interesting pieces of art I found was uh, two huge quilts that are up on the wall. And we're gonna see those in just a minute. I'm going a little too fast, I guess. This tells us about Solomon Northrup, who is a free black man. This is, if you've seen the movie, 12 Years a Slave, it's about him. He was kidnapped in New York. He was a free, free black man living in New York with a family. And he was kidnapped and sold in the South and lived 12 years as a slave until he was able to uh, get out of that situation, but that movie is very interesting. <clears throat> <coughs> the slave pens were used to hold slaves until they were held up for auction, and this shows how they were uh, taken from different cities. Um, one of the ones we'll see uh, later on was taken from Virginia all the way down to New Orleans, which was one of the big ports of entry. 
The slave pens look like this. These uh, posts along here were for a second floor. The men were held on the bottom floor and the women on the top. And there'd be maybe 50, 60 slaves held in, in the, uh, each of them. And I wanted to keep this picture in. Dale Klosterman was from our club. He grew up in Cincinnati. Maybe some of you who are from there remember him. Um, he had a psychology degree and he worked for the probation officer. His boss was this man right here, Carl Westmoreland, and then our guide, as, as you see. So Carl, who would not normally be with a, a tour group, came with us that day since he knew Dale and it was kind of a reunion for them. So he's giving us the lowdown on what happened in the slave uh, pens. And you see the uh, supports now for the floor above it, which has been taken out. <clears throat> he also did these, these two poems that are on here. I'd like to just read this bottom one. And it's uh, the story of a man who uh, is being sold into slavery and separated from his wife and children. It says, tell my mother to pray for me. Tell my wife, don't cry. Tell my girl, be brave for me. Tell my son, become a man for me and pass on my name. Tell the historians, tell the ugly truth of why they brought us here. Tell the rulers of this land, don't let it happen again. So he is now the director of this museum. Uh, as I say, a lot of the artwork uh, had to do with in, in the light coming on or looking for the light, uh, walking toward the light, or as I was saying, the two big quilts that were made by blacks who, um, whose ancestors were involved in this. And they, they're made out of all kinds of things. This is just a close up of one little portion of it. And you see different articles on it of shells and all kinds of materials. This, this ingredients and in what's in these uh, are interesting, I think, and where they're from. The print cloth from the Ivory Coast, uh, mud cloth from Mali, uh, from Ghana, from the Indian Pacific Oceans, the, the shells, Nigeria, Mali, Guinea, um, neckties, buttons, socks, music boxes, appliques, paint, thread, creativity, and lots and lots of love. So these were labors of love for the ladies that made these huge quilts. We also looked into downtown Cincinnati. A lot of it was uh, built during the um, early 18, late 1800s. The, the Tyler Davidson Fountain was kind of the center of the city and has been moved around a couple of times. The square that it's in has been enlarged, enlarged a few times. <clears throat> but uh, the four pieces on it, um, show that the uh, four, um, let me find where that is. No, I'm not even finding it. Um, well, I don't have it. The, the, there are four fountains on it that show the four uh, kinds of industries in town and also the, the workers up above it. Um, I'm a big fan of architecture, which I think I've mentioned before. Architects and gardens are my big thing. So the Netherland Plaza Hotel is one of the prime places to see Art Deco architecture in Cincinnati. And it's a lovely building. Uh, the Art Deco is the main thing, but there are touches of the Art Nouveau, which would be more of these stylized uh, curly Q kinds of things in it. So it's kind of a combination. Art Deco, if you're not familiar with what that is, is these very straight lines. It was built in the 30s. Um, and it, it's very decorative. There's, there's a lot of it in Europe and even in, in the United States. And we'll see a, a bunch of it in Cincinnati since a lot of the building was going on in the 30s. And the picture that I took of this. So if we look up on the ceilings, we see more of these curly cue, the Art Nouveau, more of the uh, decorative parts. So a very pretty place. The lobby area is kind of dark, so this picture is sort of grainy. And they're the very pretty touches. <clears throat> William Taft House is about um, the, the uh, shows, shows us the house of William Taft, who was a president, 27th president of the United States. He was born in this house and grew up here. He um, was Chief Justice of the Supreme Court as well. He was the only president that we've ever had that has been both. So say so he grew up in Cincinnati. 
and was a Republican. And he was appointed even in his 20s to be a judge and, and on different courts. And then uh, finally, the governor of the Philippines, and he became Secretary of War under Teddy Roosevelt, who kind of mentored him along. So when Roosevelt's term was up, he was a, the, um, the protege of Roosevelt and was easily elected in 1909. But that didn't happen when he was up for re-election. He was defeated after one term by Woodrow Wilson. So we also had a tour through that building and uh, saw the rooms. Most of that furniture uh, is the furniture where uh, that, that was there when he lived there. And he was a big fisherman. So of course there was a little diorama of him fishing and posters about his campaign. And he wasn't the only famous person from Cincinnati. If you look, he, there are several presidents and you'll see people that you will recognize. Salmon Chase, who was a chief justice and he's buried in the cemetery we're gonna see. Heimlich, of course, is we, we recognize the Heimlich maneuver. Harriet Beecher Stowe was the uh, author of um, a book on slavery. It was also from Cincinnati. We visited the Museum of Art and you know, it was a reasonably nice one for a mid-sized city. It had its paintings and uh, various things to see there. And uh, the sculpture of the Pinocchio on the front lawn with the Degas dancers inside the sculpture and some of the paintings, furniture. And a lot of people's favorites, the classic cars. Some Moorish rooms, this um, Arabic art. Another stop we made was at the Crone Conservatory. And I didn't include this with the garden talk that I did because I knew you'd be seeing it here. The park that it's in itself is not particularly uh, noteworthy. It's, you know, it's a through hilly uh, wooded land, but they do have a beautiful conservatory. And we, uh, some of us were talking uh, earlier about uh, plants. So I think they were getting a jump on Christmas. This was in September, but they already had their red and green out. That'll probably last through the Christmas season. And the bonsai, we were talking about that. There were some bonsai aficionados uh, and they do have some lovely bonsai plants there. Uh, chocolate tree, you see the big um, uh, nut kind of thing where the chocolate grows inside, a chenille plant, uh, succulents in one area of it where they do the temperature control. And this is a thorn, the crown of thorns. I have one of these, but not quite so big. You can see some of the thorns on it, supposedly made from the crown uh, for Jesus. And I don't know what kind of palm this is, but it's a little different than any that I've ever seen. Mary, did the cocoa tree, yeah. that was in a climate controlled thing. It doesn't grow naturally in Cincinnati. Right, okay. right. It, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Lots of orchids, all different kinds. And of course the gift shop. <laughs> you got to have a gift shop, right? And this, as I said, the, the park itself is not particularly noteworthy, but this little pavilion was there and I thought it was pretty. So now we get to the chili. Um, the Cincinnati chili is famous all over the world. And it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it's, it's like everything, every kind of fast food you like all rolled into one. We did have dinner at Skyline Chili, which is probably where it started. And, but there are other places that serve it as well. So. What it is, it's spaghetti with chili on top and cheese, but it can also include, and these are all on the menu. You can have it with hot dogs, with fries, potatoes, burritos, uh, almost anything you want on it. So uh, this is kind of what the, the thing to have in Cincinnati if you're going to visit there. And it, there are other places besides Skyline Chili to have it. Over the Rhine is one of the areas that is well known in Cincinnati. Um, it refers to the German area of town. And there were lots of German immigrants to 
the the whole Midwest uh, during the late during the mid 1880s. Uh, there were lots of wars going on and lots of people, including my grandfather was a, a draft dodger and came over uh, to escape that and, and for opportunity and land and all those good things that people immigrate for. So this area was just north of downtown and it was uh, right here. Uh, this part was a canal and uh, the Miami and Ohio Canal. And so because it was a waterway, they, they, when they left from, uh, went over from downtown into this, they called it the Rhine, being from Germany, the Rhine River, like they're going over the Rhine. So these are the two main streets where there are lots of German style buildings. There's a big park on this side and we'll see the, the music hall, which was uh, at one time the city hall. So it was eventually uh, drained out and uh, a subway put in there, but that subway is no longer in use. And there is a just main, a, a double divided street uh, running through it. So from 1865 to 80, there, there was lots of building in this area and with different styles. This is the music hall, which we're gonna be seeing a, a picture of a little bit later, but lots of different styles of, or, of architecture and combinations thereof, a lot of variety. Uh, my parent, my grandparents on my father's side were German in Milwaukee, and they had the bay windows like this, a lot of those in the German neighborhood. So they're pretty common here in this over the Rhine area too. But as time went on, uh, many buildings were left unrepaired and uh, it started to fall into disrepair. Uh, renovation is really going on now and it's gotten to be kind of a, a nice place to live. Uh, people are fixing up these old buildings. And it says in 2001, there were estimated 500 vacant buildings in over the Rhine with 2,500 residential units. 278 were condemned as uninhabitable. So because it is right down next to downtown though, and in historic district, it is being uh, restored. But a lot of buildings were lost in the, in the process. But by 2006, uh, it, it had been declared as one of the most endangered historic places. So the focus now is in renovation and also attracting local businesses for all these uh, street level shops. And one of the things Cincinnati's famous too is a lot of cities have their animal or something that they have in the downtown area. And we, they had flying pigs. In Dallas, we have Pegasus. In uh, Custer, South Dakota, they have Buffalo, but Cincinnati has pigs. So you might see these on the street corners in all different decorations and they're kind of fun to spot. But as I say, things are perking up with the foundation now winning uh, third place in the National Trust for Historic Preservation uh, Community Challenge. So things are brightening up for um, getting some of these buildings restored. Now you can imagine in a German community that prohibition presented some challenges because they were big beer drinkers. So, um, this was one of the dance halls from the time, and there was a bar and a, 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 you know, plenty of beer making going on, lots of little homebrew type places or local brew places. So they literally went underground. Uh, they, the breweries, uh, this one is in the Guild Hall for the art space, uh, are a lot of artists in this building, literally went underground. They um, went... <laughs> down into the, the uh, caves, the basements, and uh, did their brewing and um, provisions for the brewing, uh, uh, the beer population underground, so as not to be um, found. In the, over the Rhine district, there's uh, the Finley Market, which is the uh, oldest market in uh, Ohio, and has lots of places where you can get something to eat or get some, buy something to wear. Um, Lots of different shops. It's more like a um, uh, flea market kind of place, but it has everything you could possibly want. Lots of fun. Have something to eat there as well. This little pocket park has all these tiles. They look like they were made by children. I'm not really sure about the background of it, but if you look at it, you'll see all kinds of uh, cute little uh, tiled pictures. And here is the music hall, which I was uh, saying is at Washington Park and over the Rhine. And of course, lots of street art.
we visited uh, St. Sarah Church, which was built in 1859 or dedicated actually was completed in that time of uh, the Franciscan friars built it. Uh, wasn't that the over the Rhine really needed a church because a lot of them were Catholics and they already had eight German Catholic churches in Cincinnati being the mass being in German at that time. But we did visit this little church. And the reason uh, being that this one had a little bit of interest because the first Catholic church in Cincinnati was built on this spot in 1819 and now became a Christ church uh, in a different location. But the cemetery was here. So when St. Seraph built here, they had to um, move some of those graves. And so some of the graves are now in the floor of St. Seraph's church in the basement. And as we look at us, not only some of the tile floor, but also some of the, the grave stones from back in that era. And we have a nice little patio to visit in outside. One of my favorite places, I like museums, was the Cincinnati Museum Center. And the, the background on my uh, Zoom uh, tonight is the Cincinnati Museum Center, which is this. It was originally the uh, Union Terminal's train station. It's right down on the waterfront. It was up high enough and there was some um, protection from the river for it, but not enough. Uh, it's an Art Deco station because it was built in the 1930s. It's in the National Historic Monument. Right now it has a history museum, uh, the history of Cincinnati, a history of natural science and, uh, and natural history and science, a children's museum, archives, Nomni Theater, uh, lots of other things in it. And you see the artwork on it being the Art Deco, nice fountain in the front, really lovely place. This is the view from inside looking out and this huge dome was um, one of the biggest ever ever made. But 1937, they had a big flood and uh, they, they were able to, it didn't affect the train tracks so much, but they did reroute the trains to uh, stations that were farther north in the suburbs. So today it's protected so that it's not flooded like this anymore. And it, it hadn't been used as a train station after the flood. They, they turned it into a museum, as I said, but now the um, Amtrak is also, uh, uh, you can catch the Amtrak out of this station. <clears throat> so this large half dome is the largest in the Western hemisphere. It has a long, long, this circular uh, part of the inside um, murals of the local industries and occupations. And there's also um, an outdoor um, museum that's associated with it. <clears throat> of a 1600 acre plot of land that, that you can also go see. What I found fun about it was the models they had. This is the model of the train station in the Cincinnati Museum. We didn't have time to go to both museums, both major ones, but we did see the museum. Of, we had our choice of seeing the um, Cincinnati or the natural history. But they, uh, they tried to concentrate on the era of the 1940s because this was the era of the war production. And there's our Cincinnati City Hall again. So it's not only the models, but they have some uh, live, um, you know, life-size uh, models of what Cincinnati looked like back in the 40s. And the, uh, this is one of the, the steamboats along the riverfront. Uh, you can see what the what our homes looked like at that time. You remember the old ice boxes and what the downtown looked like, and what our cars, what our clothes looked like, and what was going on at that time. We had the GI Bill after the war. Have a Coke. Remember the old TVs? <laughs> Look a little small for today. <clears throat> the old street cars. Cincinnati was a hub of war production. There were already a lot of industries there, as you see, that, they, that were there that were making um, peacetime products and were able to switch over to wartime products. So a lot of them um, changed what they made and some were able to just adjust to uh, 
pretty easily to what they made before the war. And then some new plants also came on. So Cincinnati was very important during World War II. And this little diorama shows how some soldiers came home from the war. This mother finding her, her son's not coming home. And this one, of course, welcoming her son home. It also honors uh, native people who were here first. So there are lots of exhibits about the first people who came here, the, the Indians, the fur traders, the missionaries, uh, and immigrants looking for a new life. Uh, shows the people in the different industries and shipping, agriculture, that was that made Cincinnati uh, so important being on the Ohio River. Uh, Cincinnatians are very pr pragmatic. Uh, this is Spring Grove Cemetery and Arboretum. <laughs> <laughs> so why not, if you have a nice cemetery, have it be a park? Why not? So in 1945, it was established as a cemetery. It's, it's quite large. It has many springs and groves of trees, and it's a lovely place. So the, the folks of Cincinnati, the people of the cemetery, hired a nice landscape architect to beautify the grounds, and he made a garden cemetery out of it. And it's now a National Historic Landmark, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places. So the way they, they planned this well, first of all, let me show you what the main uh, cemetery chapels look like. There are lots of other private chapels, but this is the main one that everybody can go in. And they're lovely uh, stained glass windows. It's a mausoleum. You see some of the folks buried here. And we had a little tour by tram around it. So there are 12 of these little ponds. And uh, you see some of these um, nice monuments to families. <clears throat> Some of the finer families uh, could afford to buy up a big plot and put something on it. It might be a chapel, it might be a statuary. And then uh, they had a mausoleum within it that they could bury their own family. And then when they ran out of space, they buried them in the ground, but flat. So you're going to see some flat stones that don't stick up like these. So as you bicycle through the park or have your picnic, you're just like in a park setting more than, more than looking like a cemetery. So it's really lovely. And people were out there, you know, jogging and doing their bicycling and all, one of the little chapels. Really a pretty place to be. We did some side trips, as I said earlier, went down to New Richmond and to Freedom and to uh, Ripley on what they call the Freedom Trail, which is where the slaves were taken across the river uh, on, on a, from Kentucky on the other side over to New Richmond and to uh, Ripley. <clears throat> Originally, there were two little towns here side by side and they got together and formed New Richmond. So it's just a small town. This we, uh, there's another little place that you can stop and eat with Judy, my host. <clears throat> and there's a small museum there about the town. We stopped uh, out between there and Ripley at the Rankin House. And this was the home of Reverend John Rankin. He was a Presbyterian minister for 44 years in Ripley. And he lived out in the country. And he was a staunch abolitionist, uh, founded some abolitionist groups and helped over 2000 slaves cross the Ohio River nearby uh, through his house and his barn. And it's up on a big hill. And uh, so you can have a nice view. Uh, it talks about Uncle Tom's cabin um, immortalized by something that happened here. And that story is about a, a slave that was coming across in wintertime with a child and uh, broke through the ice. And he went down to the river, which is 100 steps down to the, the Ohio, and saved her. And uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe put, her, put that particular incident in her book, Uncle Tom's Cabin. So it's now maintained by the National Park Service. It has a beautiful view of the bends in the Ohio River. And this is the back of the house, uh, Judy looking out at this lovely view from there. And the house has a lot of, of the same um, equipment and, and pots and pans and furnishings that the Rankins had when they lived in this house. And it's not a large house. Where they put 13 children, I really couldn't tell you. But some, some of these, uh, uh, items did belong to the Rankins. 
So in Ripley, this is one side of the sign. We're going to see the other in a second. It was incorporated uh, in 1812. Uh, the person that we uh, the person that we want to uh, visit here is uh, somebody named um, John, well, Rankin and John Parker. And we'll talk about him on the other side of the, the uh, sign. He was, he along with, uh, he was a black man who along with Rankin was one of the main conductors as they call them on the Underground Railroad, meaning they were people who helped people cross the river and find safety in their way north. And there were a series of places, uh, safe places where they could stay. So Ripley is also a nice, cute little town along the river. And the John Parker house, as I say, the other side of the sign uh, tells you about him. He was a noted African-American entrepreneur. He was interesting in that he was born into slavery in Virginia. And at the age of eight, he was sent with a gang of slaves of 400 all linked together. Um, one of the, the, the man he was linked uh, right next to was beaten to death and, um, and died while he was uh, chained to him. And it just um, made a big impression on him. So they were sold off as they went along down on their way to New Orleans. He was, went all the way to New Orleans where he was sold uh, to an owner, but he was um, not a very good slave. He was always trying to get away. And so he was sold then to uh, a lady and he, contracted with her to buy his freedom from her and he would pay her back. And it took him until 1845 to do that. Uh, so he bought his freedom and then moved up to the Cincinnati area. And he opened a foundry, he was very smart and uh, employed other African-Americans. He obtained a patent on one of his uh, inventions. And he was also, um, it says more than, uh, aided more than 900 fugitive slaves. And so his, um, his home is open to the public as well as a museum. And it uh, does have some of the things from when he lived there, but it, it also has uh, museum items more like a museum that you can look at in the cases. Uh, this is a mural up above. You see the, the uh, black man with the, the boat crossing the Ohio. He never had his picture made because he was afraid he'd be on, it'd be used on a water poster. So we don't have any pictures of him at all. <clears throat> the Cincinnati Zoo, we're back to these pragmatic um, Cincinnatians. It's also a botanical garden. And it's quite nice, both uh, the uh, gardens, uh, which are all over and makes a very attractive zoo. <coughs> and we were there in fall, so we had some of the fall color. The last uh, of the carrier pigeons, you remember they went extinct, uh, was in the Cincinnati Zoo. So they have this statue of the last carrier pigeon, of course, who died and no, there were no more. So some of the animals that were from the zoo, some of the gardens. And in the news lately, you have seen, I think, probably at least I have, uh, Fiona, the hippo, the baby hippo who died. She was uh, born to great um, adulation in 2017, but she unexpectedly passed away this past December. And Chuck Baum is with us, but he says he's not related to the pottery people. There are a lot of pottery and uh, art things going on in the Cincinnati area. We visited that one. I'm not gonna show any more of those, but if you want to visit other places in the area that I haven't shown you, you might try some of the quilt barns. I showed you one here. There's there are more in Ohio. If you're in any other place, I saw some around Wilmington. But if, across the uh, Ohio, there's a, a, a horse parks, um, Indian sites, the Harriet Beecher Stowe House. Uh, somebody went to the symphony last night. The History Museum is, is down with the train at the train station, like uh, the Air Force Museum number of breweries, uh, Shaker community, Amish community, the Wright Brothers uh, Indian things. So there are lots to see in this area. If you run out, it's just your own fault. So uh, we're going to leave Cincinnati and I'm free to ask questions. I do have a, a website that you can, if you are interested in the quilt trail so that I can put up on the chat. Okay, well, Mary, thank you very much. Goodness. 
You didn't know there was all that much to see there, did you? No, no, truly. (laughs) Truly, there is is a lot to see there. Well, um, we we had a great time. You know, um, let's see. You want to stop sharing your screen where we can see people? Because I know we have some people from Cincinnati. Yeah. And... um, Charlene is on and she has a, her niece. Is your niece on? Oh, you're, you're muted, Charlene. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, okay. I'm yeah, not but, sure she was going to try to get on, but I don't know if she had a conflict and couldn't get on. But I wanted to tell you that when you talked about the cemetery and the uh-huh. Arboretum, uh-huh. they have, and I gave it to Kathleen, there's a website where you can do a treasure hunt there. It takes oh, about yeah. two and a half hours and you walk through there. That it's very fun. cleverly done. Uh-huh. Did you do that? Is it one of those GeoCity things? I'm not uh, sure. It might be, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna that. see if I can share the picture. So just, um, Give me one second to see of, if I of the, of the cemetery, one of the cemetery. Of the, yes. Sure. Let's see. Well, not well of the. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. It's here we go. Do you see the? Do you see that? It's a Cincinnati treasure hunts. No, we see your email. No. Oh. No, I can't can't see it. Is it this okay. first one? Where is it? Very political um, email, Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, then we'll stop. The sure. one that says Cincinnati tonight, maybe you need to click on that. You mean actually at, in the email? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Front, we can find that. Um, <clears throat> Did she send a link via the email? Yeah. I'm going to put on the chat the... Um, right there. Click on that. and website for the, the, the quilt trail. <clears throat> Um, okay, well, I, that's what I had opened up. Um, so I'm sorry. I thought I had it all lined up. Um, oh, well, I will keep trying, but you all can (laughs) talk. (laughs) It's a very, it's, the tour is really exciting because they will give you little hints. It's like a mystery tour. And so they'll give you little hints and tell you to walk 300 feet to this next uh, point, turn left, and yeah. it will tell the whole history or a lot of the history of Cincinnati because a lot of those people are buried there. It's very where, interesting. Where did you say it was? Th- this treasure hunt? It's um, it it's at that um, cemetery. I don't have it in front okay. of me okay. right now. Right. Yeah, Spring Spring Grove Cemetery. Spring okay. Grove, yes. Uh-huh. And you um, know what? We I, will put the. We will put it on the website, on the blue, on the blog. Sure, that'd be okay. a good idea. Yeah. Um, and the picture of it, and it says that it, you do it like from your phone, and mm-hmm. it yeah, will yeah. give you it'll give you um, riddles that you have to solve to figure out where to go next. Oh dear. Um, and I mean, it, and there are five or six different versions i mean different places you would go and they have you find things in each one so it looks like a really fun thing to do yeah um i i just wanted this i mentioned this before last week or whenever that i'm from ohio uh-huh. and when she went through that i was oh yes my oh, yeah. although i'm barbara mahoney that was my husband's name um my names and my family are stegmeyer shook mm-hmm. Um, the German names, all German background. Mm-hmm. And um, w- in the night, when you mentioned the hotel, in fact, I was uh-huh. wondering if it was still there. Yes, um, yes. it's an I went hotel. there in the 1940s. Yeah. Uh, as a high school student, mm-hmm. uh, I was selected to go down there for a few days for a citizen. I don't even remember what the topic was anymore, but my mother drove me down there and we stayed. So when you were talking about the Art Deco and all of that, it's just, it's still there. It's yes, it is. Yes, and it's been restored a couple of times. Yeah. It's an yeah, Omni Hotel. Fun. It's the Netherland Plaza Hotel downtown. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, I stayed place. there. Um, and wow. then I had mentioned before that 
when we went to the Cincinnati Zoo because I had a cousin who lived a little bit north of Cincinnati mm -hmm. and um, they had, I just wondered if they still did that because they had opera in the summertime. You could mm -hmm. actually go in and sit in a tent and yeah. watch opera. And that was my, I was about seven or eight or nine. That was the first time I ever saw actually opera. And my mother was a music background. Yeah. Um, so, and then my cousin actually started one of the first motels in that area. Motels were not in the North. They were started in the South. I don't know if any of you know that little piece of history, but he had one of the first motels. And I, as I said, it was about eight or nine. And I thought it was so neat to go and clean the rooms. <laughs> when I, you know, we were there for a few days to stay. And that's why he took us to the zoo to see the opera too. But so I have wonderful memories of- Thank of you, Barbara. Cincinnati. You know, let's have some of the other people from Cincinnati share some of theirs yeah. and then we can circle back if you think of some other other good stories to share. Now, I do have a question. I know we have Chuck and Bill both grew up in Cincinnati and I'm wanting to know if either of you guys like had your high school proms at that hotel with all the art deco. It just looked like they would have, you know, used it. Well, I'll say that we had our prom downtown, but it was at a different hotel. Mm -hmm. um, back then, I think it was an office building. Uh, oh. The way I remember the crew building, crew tower. Yes, I it's crew it tower. I thought, of, I, 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 as a kid growing up there, and, and I grew up east of town, so, you know, downtown was sort of a, a myth to me, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, we had our prom at a different hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right about it being Karoo Tower, too. I didn't mention that. There's an observation deck on top that has a great right. view yeah. of, of the Ohio uh, Valley there. Hey, uh, I uh, didn't have a high school prom in Daddy. Uh, I went to high school in Cleveland. But um, I did want to uh, thank you, Barry. There was a lot of things that uh, I haven't, uh, didn't know about around the area. Uh, but the, I do want to correct you on a couple things. Okay. <laughs> today, I always learn more than I, than I can tell anybody. Well, today is Fiona's uh, birthday, actually. She's on the seats. Uh, she's four years old today. Her birth, uh, she was born on January 24th four years ago. And so it's a big deal here in Cincinnati today for her birthday. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I just wanted to tell you about her. And um, you mentioned also that the museum uh, center, which used to be Union Terminal, uh, Union Terminal was where uh, most of the soldiers, a lot of soldiers in the Midwest, uh, uh, at least in the state area, all of the men from Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky, went through Union Terminal, uh, got on trains to go to their uh, basic training in World War II. Yeah. Uh, that train station behind you there that's been converted into a museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you were there, they've completely renovated all the fountains in front of that building. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, they're just absolutely fabulous uh, fountains. But the, the museum center is not on the river, as you mentioned. It's it's quite a few miles away. It's probably what five miles. Yeah, fine. Okay, uh, actually, I'm corrected on that. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, another thing you said about Cincinnati was the uh, Roebling. Uh, you called it Roland, the John Roland Bridge. Yeah. You mentioned it's actually John Roebling, R O E E L I N G. Okay, I'll look that up. A man that designed the Brooklyn Bridge. As a matter of fact, uh, they're both uh, pretty much identical, only the Cincinnati suspension bridge is smaller scale, but it was both, they're both designed by Roebling, R-O-B-L-I-G. Oh, I've got that now. The suspension bridge is the Roebling Bridge. Yeah, the Roebling, the John Roland Bridge was the one that was right behind that guide that we had, the, the other one. I've never heard of it. I'm not, I'm not sure where that is. Yeah, there were two bridges um, in those pictures. But yeah, you're right. The suspension bridge is the Roebling Bridge. I've got that in my notes too. Okay. okay. Um, 
Thank you very much, Chuck. Um, Bill, did you have a couple, since I, I brought up the, the prom thing, was there <laughs> some special memory you have as a, a resident, prior resident of Cincinnati? Well, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. One, um, as, as Chuck mentioned, the suspension bridge, the Roebling Bridge, and, and the Cincinnati Suspension Bridge, when he built, he did, he built that as a demonstration for the Brooklyn Bridge. He, uh, it, it led to his getting the contract in Brooklyn, um, but he, he had this theory that he could, you know, build this suspension bridge, hang everything from, from, you know, banded cables. And so that was like a, you know, a, a demonstration model. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the Cincinnati uh, 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 chili yeah. that, and there are, so there's, you know, there's a number of different restaurants uh, and, and people do debate well, which one's better, really? And uh, I, I was always partial to, to Skyline. I, I, you know, it was it was in the next town over. I grew up in Terrace Park, and uh, in Milford there was a, a Skyline Chili, and so that's where me and my friends would ride our bike over there, and we'd, uh, you know, we'd eat Skyline Chili, and uh, uh, sometimes two, you know, a couple of plates full. Um, <laughs> this last Christmas, I went to. Uh, visit my daughter out in D.C. And on the way back, I was on I-70 coming through Columbus. And I just wondered, I wonder if there's a Skyline Chili in Columbus. And there's several yeah. uh, in the states surrounding yeah. Cincinnati. And uh, it was so good. And, and, and I appreciate having the, the chili in a can out here in Colorado, but it, it, it just doesn't hold a candle to the real thing. And so... I left there at about two o'clock in the afternoon and I, and, and, and I got on my map software on my phone and uh, uh, asked the question if there was Skyline Chili in Indianapolis, because that was going to be about dinner time. But uh, uh, they, they only have, I think, two restaurants and I missed that one. But I was willing to, I, I, I love it so much, I was willing to have it for lunch and dinner. <laughs> And, and okay. Well, one thing I, I've got to bring up is that the chili restaurants in Cincinnati made a passport where you would go to the different chili restaurants and you'd rate them and you'd take your thumb and stick it in the chili and you'd put it on your stamp and then you're supposed to trace the size of the oyster cracker on there. And I mean, it was just like the coolest thing except that you could you could spend a year eating nothing but chili, and you'd have your passport filled out. Well, you know what? That could be the perfect segue because we have like nine minutes left, and um, I had put together a recipe segment, but we've kind of covered much of it. Um, <laughs> We really have. Um, let me just quickly go through a couple of these questions and then I'm going to switch to my little recipe um, thing. One, um, uh, Cincinnati is sometimes nicknamed the Queen City. Does, yes. Do you know why? I don't know why. I, I failed to look that up. I did, I did see that, but I don't know why. Bill, do you know why? I do not know why. Chuck. Oh, I, I was going to say something, but I won't. <laughs> I, I can guess because it was on the Ohio and there was a lot of shipping along there and it was an important port. Uh, that That's why it was called guess. the Queen City? Pardon me? That's why it was called the Queen City? Yeah. Oh, That's okay. That's not as logical as anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Stan or Sandra said that garden cemeteries were very popular. There's a nice one in Richmond, Virginia, as yes. well as in Montreal. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was new to me that you would combine the two, but oh well. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, 